Hang there my verse in witness of my love, and thou, thrice crowned queen of night, survey with thy chaste eye from thy pale sphere above thy huntress's name, which my full life doth sway. Oh, Rosalind, these trees shall be my books, and in their barks my thoughts I'll character, such that every eye that in this forest looks shall see thy virtue witnessed everywhere. Run, run, Orlando, carve on every tree the fair, the chaste, the unexpressive she. How like you this shepherd's life, Master Touchstone? Oh, in respect of itself, it is a good life. But in respect that it is a shepherd's life, it is naught. Was that ever at court, shepherd? No, truly. Oh, then thou art damned. For not being at court? Your reason? Why, if thou never was at court, thou never saw his good manners. If thou never saw his good manners, thy manners must be wicked. And wickedness is sin, and sin is damnation. Oh, thou art in a parlous, parlous state, shepherd. <clears throat> Here comes young Master Ganymede, my new mistress's brother. From the east to the western end, no jewel is like Rosalind. Her worth being mounted on the wind, through all the world bears Rosalind. All the pictures fairest lined are but blacked to... Rosalind? <laughs> <laughs> Winter garments must be lined, <laughs> and so must slender Rosalind. Sweetest nut has sourest lined, and such a nut is Rosalind. He that sweetest rose will find must find love's prick <laughs> and Rosalind. This is a very, very full scallop of verses. Why do you infect yourself with it? Oh, peace, you dull fool. I found them on the tree. <sighs> then truly the tree yields bad fruit. Helen's cheek, but not her heart. Cleopatra's majesty. Atlanta's better part, sad Lucretia's modesty. Thus Rosalind of many parts by heavenly snood was devised, of many faces, eyes and hearts, to have the touches dearest prized. Heaven would that she these gifts should have, and I to live and die her slave. <laughs> oh, most gentle pulpiter. <laughs> How now? Oh. <clears throat> Pack friends. Shepherd, go off a little and uh, go with him, sir. Come on, Shepherd. <sighs> Did thou ask here without wondering how thy name should be hanged and carved upon these tweets? I was never so be rhymed since Pythagoras' time. <laughs> <laughs> know you who have done this? Is it a man? <laughs> and a chain that you once wore about his neck. Oh, change you colour. I pretty. Who? Is it possible? Oh, nay, I pretty now with the most petitionary vehemence. Tell me. Oh, oh, oh wonderful, wonderful. And one most wonderful, wonderful, and yet again wonderful. And after that, out of a whooping. <laughs> God, good my complexion, Aliena, I pretty tell me who it is, and speak apace. I would I might pour this concealed man out of thy mouth, as wine comes out of a narrow mouth a bottle, either too much at once or none at all. I pretty, take thy cork out of thy mouth, that I may drink thy tidings. So you may put a man in your belly. Oh, what manner of a man? <laughs> it is young Orlando. 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 Alas! It's a day! <laughs> oh. What shall I do with my doublet my hose? What did he say when you saw him? What said he? How looked he? Did he ask for me? 
And when will she? What? What? When will you see him again? Answer me, in one word. I found him under a tree, like、oh. a dropped acorn. It may be called the Jarvis tree when it drops for such fruit. There lay he stretched along like a wounded knight. <sighs> Though it be pity to see such a sight, it well becomes the ground. <laughs> Cry holler to thy tongue! It brings me out of tune. <laughs> I thank you for your company, but good faith, I had as lief have been myself alone. And so had I, and yet, for fashion's sake, I thank you too for your society. God be with you. Let's meet as little as we can. <laughs> I do desire we may be better strangers. I I pray you mar no more trees with writing love songs in their barks. <laughs> I pray you mar no more of my verses with reading them ill favouredly. Rosalind is your love's name. <laughs> yes, just. I do not like her name. There was no thought of pleasing you when she was christened. You are full of pretty answers. I'll tarry no longer with you. Farewell, good Signor Love. Hmm. <laughs> Farewell, good Madam Melancholy. <clears throat> Hola, Forrester. Do you hear? Very well. What would you? I pray you.、Uh, what is a clock? You should ask me what time of day. There is no clock in the forest. Ah, <laughs> then、uh, there is no true lover in the forest. Else, sighing every minute or groaning every hour will detect the lazy foot of time as well as a clock. Where dwell you, pretty youth? Uh, with this shepherd, <clears throat> with this shepherdess,、uh, my sister here in the forest. Your accent is something finer than you could purchase in so remote a dwelling. <laughs> I have been told so of many, but indeed, an old religious uncle of mine taught me to speak. Who, in his youth, was an inland man, one that knew courtship too well, for there he fell in love. I have heard him read many lectures against it, and I thank God I am not a woman <laughs> to be touched with such giddy offences. <laughs> What were some of the principal offences that he laid to the charge of women? I prithee recount some of them.、Uh, no, I will not cast away my physique, but on those that are sick. Oh, there is a man that haunts. Did the, the forest that abuses our young plants with carving Rosalind on their barks and hangs odes upon hawthorns and elegies on brambles, all forsooth deifying the name of Rosalind? <laughs> If I could meet that fancy monger, I would give him some good counsel, for he seems to have the quotidian of love upon him. I am he that is so love shaked. I pray you tell me your remedy. Hmm. There is none of my uncle's marks upon you. Oh, he told me how to know a man in love. What were his marks? A lean cheek which you have not, a blue eye and sunken which you have not, a beard neglected which、hmm, you clearly have not. Then your horse should be uncarted, your sleeve unbuttoned, your shoe untied, and everything about you demonstrating a careless desolation. But you are no such man. I swear to you, youth, by the white hand of Rosalind, I am that he, that unfortunate he. But are you so much in? <clears throat> But are you so much in love, as your rhymes speak? Neither rhyme nor reason can express how much. <laughs> love is merely a madness. Yet, I profess curing it by counsel. Have you ever cured any so? Yes, one, and in this manner, he was to imagine me his love, his mistress, and I set him every day to woo me. At which time would I, being but a moonish youth, would now like him, now loathe him, then entertain him, then forswear him, now weep for him, then hup, spit at him, that I drave my suitor from a, his mad humour of a love to a living humour of madness. And thus I cured him, 
And this way, I will take upon me to wash your liver as clean as a sound sheep's heart that there shall not be one spot of love in it. I would not be cured, youth. <laughs> I would cure you. If you would but call me Rosalind, and come every day to my coat and woo me. Now, by the faith of my love, I will. Tell me where it is. Oh, go with me, and I'll show it to you. And, and by the way, you, will, you shall tell me where in the forest here you live. Will you go? With all my heart, good youth. Nay, you must call me Rosalind. Come, sister. Will you go?